Good morning and welcome to worship at Bethany Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you are with us virtually. We're together in spirit and we always hope that there aren't too many technological glitches. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and give thanks in it. Um, and as we begin our worship, just a couple of announcements. Even as we continue wondering when exactly some of the um, quarantine restrictions will be lifted, we will continue to worship um, for the time being virtually. I'll continue to check in with offers for Zoom meetings. Um, and until we get the clearance, that's what the, the path will be. But rest assured that when we're able to be together, we will have uh, a safe way of doing so, and we'll definitely get the message out there. Um, another thing to share is just that all of our commissions um, are pretty hard at work. There's a lot going on. We're still managing the building. We're still um, meeting about how to do worship. Um, so it's good to know that. And in fact, on Tuesday of this week is our session meeting. Even the leaders of the church will gather and continue to discuss um, the business of the church and how we are the church in these strange days. Um, so let us be called to worship um, as we do so. Paul, can I invite you to first pour the, the water in to remember our baptism? We remember that we are named and claimed by God in our baptism, that God has plans for all of us. Even in those good days and the bad days, we are being led on the path that God has set before us. Let us be in worship together. As we also do so, and you're checking in on Facebook, I would invite you to Share the peace with people. Let them know you're thinking of them. Your charge this week, as always, is to send an email or make a phone call to a friend or even a stranger. And um, let us also know about any prayer concerns you may have. So we will uh, move on to our scripture passage. Scriptures. 
as they came near the village to which they were going. He walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and he, they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
light on this. Try this. Thank you. It is so good to, even though there's a small worship team gathered here, there we go. Um, it is such a joy to hear Natalia playing. I think if you tuned in a little early, she played for about 10 minutes, and I think you hit about six of my favorite hymns and pieces. So it's also funny, as I begin to preach, there are only one or two people, so there's no way for you to hide if you were feeling tired. I will make eye contact directly with you. Anyway, as always, um, we trust that God's Spirit will move in our hearts and wherever we are. If we're at home in our pajamas, God is still present with us. So our text for today picks up right after where we left off last week, just after Jesus had appeared to the disciples who were locked up in a safe house, avoiding arrest. So then today, two disciples are walking to a village called Emmaus, most likely fleeing to another safe house. Surely Cleopas and his companion were feeling shell-shocked. They're on a long walk trying to process what has just transpired in Jerusalem. They're on a long walk, and they are thinking about the events that led to the crucifixion. Their hopes of this Messiah, who would liberate the Jewish people from Roman rule, had been dashed in the most outrageous of manners. Their supposed Messiah had been crucified, dying the death of a traitor. I know that as of late, so many of us are feeling disappointed and frustrated and even lost. We're tired of being home and we long to return to our normal routines. So many of our home plans have been dashed. We had vacation plans, gatherings, we're not sure that those things will happen. For many others, they are feeling hopeless and overwhelmed completely. They've lost their jobs, they're scrambling to pay bills. Others are terrified of catching this vicious virus, while others are mourning sick loved ones from afar. These are troubling days. The crucifixion turned the lives of the disciples upside down, and the coronavirus is having the same effect on our lives. In the midst of their grief and bewilderment, a stranger joined these lost souls and began to chat with them about the things that had happened in Jerusalem. The two disciples were unable to recognize Jesus, and they were shocked that he, in fact, didn't hear of all the hubbub in Jerusalem. It was finally in the breaking of the bread that these men became aware to the fact that it was Jesus who was with them all along their journey. Soon after, they then returned and shared the good news of the resurrection to other disciples. There are those times, it's often in good days, when we feel rooted and strong in our faith. But if we're honest, and we should be honest, there are also those times where we feel our faith wavering. We can get so overwhelmed in these heavy days. We wonder, what does the future hold? Why is this happening to us, and will life ever return to normal again? Today's text reminds us that even in dire times, and in those times when our faith is wavering, Jesus is still there walking beside us, though sometimes unrecognizable. We know we have this tendency on focusing on the bad rather than the good all around us. We inventory what we've lost rather than what we have gained. As I mentioned in last week's sermon, this time can be called a great pause we can use it to reprioritize what is truly important in our lives. In fact, many of us and our nation is being forced to do so. But interestingly, today's text offers a helpful phrase that can reorder our thinking. Didn't our hearts burn within us? I think all of us know about those holy times 
when our hearts burn and we know something special is happening around us. We can think of the birth of a child or a sunset, maybe reading a letter from an old friend or making a new friend, even a kind smile from a stranger in the grocery store. Indeed, our hearts can burn during big moments and in small ones. When our hearts burn in this fashion, we are given a glimpse of Christ's presence all around us. And inevitably, we gain a sense of peace and our faith can be renewed. This text demonstrates that special things happen in the midst of meaningful conversations, in sharing, in walks and meals, and in acts of graciousness, hospitality, and kindness. Moreover, we recognize that our faith journey isn't meant to be walked alone. It's meant to be shared. We find encouragement and support from one another, but even when we can't physically be together, as now is the case, we still can be together because of the amazing technology we have. We're worshiping from the confines of our own home. We can call one another, we can Zoom, we hold one another in the light of love and prayer until we meet again. So sisters and brothers, during these strange, overwhelming days of quarantine, I urge you to keep reflecting about your faith and discussing your faith with others. Let them know what gives you hope and hear what gives them hope. Keep your spirit open to the ways in which your heart might burn with the presence of God. Train your eyes, your ears, and your heart to look for those little signs of hope all around you. Jesus is still very present. You can just take a little more reflection to see where. So in the midst of these lonely days, still let your hearts burn. Trust that Christ is with us, and may your faith be restored. Amen. I now want to invite us into a time of prayer, remembering um, that when we are far from one another, we still have that amazing capacity to lift to God all of those concerns and joys that we carry on our hearts. So let us be in prayer together. God of miracles, God of resurrection, and God who causes our hearts to burn with hope. We give you thanks for this beautiful day in Sacramento. We think of all of the goodness that is around us. The, the wild creatures of the earth are going about their business thankful for this day. We see the season changing from spring into summer. We are so thankful for our daily bread. And we're thankful for having loved ones and friends who are concerned about us. God, our hearts are heavy, though, as we navigate these days of not knowing what to expect and what tomorrow holds. We do know so many people who we hold dear as well as strangers are struggling. They feel alone and depressed. So many have lost their livelihoods and they're wondering what tomorrow will bring. The stresses get to be so very deep. So God, we lift them to you that they would have a sense of your presence, that you are walking with all of us as we navigate these strange days, that you will create new opportunities, many which are better than we could have imagined. We lift to you all of those people who are working so hard to help the collective good. We think of grocery store workers, we think of line repairmen, sewer workers, hospital workers and janitors, nurses, doctors, so many people who are essential to keeping our uh, basic needs met. So we pray for their safety 
We give you thanks for the strength that you've given them. God, we also lift to you all the nations of the world. There are countries that are prepared for pandemics, and there are those that only have a few hospitals, let alone ventilators. So God, we pray that there would be an end to this virus, that medical teams would be able to solve this issue and that we would have good governance that helps keep us safe by social distancing, by being smart about when we leave the home, about those protective measures to keep ourselves and others safe. We are praying for those many people now who are facing health issues, who may be having mental health crises, we know that in many ways, life does not stop even in the midst of a pandemic. So we pray for healing. We also pray for, again, presence. That we can feel as though we are in the valley of the shadow of death. But let us fear no evil, because you are there to protect us and guide us, even if it will be into heaven with all those who have gone before us. We thank you so very much for the gift of your word, how it restores our faith. We remember the early disciples who were shell-shocked, not knowing what would be next, and yet Christ was with them and led them forward so much so that for over 2,000 years, the good news of your life, death, and resurrection has been shared and gives us all hope for tomorrow. So it is in Jesus' strong name that we pray together the prayer he taught his earliest disciples and all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we begin to wrap up our service, I do remind people about sharing of tithes and offerings. The business and work of the church does continue forward. We know that it's heavy economically for so many, but we also think if we can give back but a portion, this is good to put more light into the world. I also have a charge as you go from this place, which is to um, be sure that you are reaching out to people. Talk about your faith. Again, talk about those things that give you hope and hear what gives other people hope because that begins to kind of break the, 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 the bubble that we're in and we can find our hearts burning once again. So may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and ever after. Hallelujah. Amen.